Good evening. Welcome to the September 16th, 2021 meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. As you may have noted on the signs when you walked into Town Hall, those fully vaccinated are no longer required to wear a face covering at Town Hall. Though, as you can also see, some of our board members and staff, including myself, will be keeping their masks on. Please be advised that the board's next meeting, October 7th, 2021, will be held via video conferencing, so check the town's website or call the board secretary closer to the meeting date to get the Zoom information to participate or watch the meeting. Not only that meeting will be uh, by Zoom, but for the, for, the, uh, <laughs> for the foreseeable future for right now, we're going to be switching back to Zoom meetings. With that said, I ask that you uh, join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. We will be starting tonight's meeting with the public hearings. A reminder that applicants, agents, and members of the public speaking, other than attorneys, will be sworn in, will state their address for the record, and will offer their testimony as it relates to the application before the board. Members of the public are typically given a three-minute time limit on their testimony, so please keep that in mind. Also, since we are in the auditorium tonight, a reminder that you must speak directly into the microphone in order to be heard. We have to do that as well. <laughs> Feel free to take the microphone out of the holder if that's more comfortable for you, but please speak loudly and directly into the microphone. A couple of other things uh, before we uh, uh, go, um, continue. Um, if you have cell phones on you, if you can do us a favor and turn them off or silence them because they interfere with our recording equipment. And in addition, if you're inclined to speak to one another in the auditorium um, during the meeting, if you can do us a favor and go into the hallway rather than speaking in the auditorium um, to one another, uh, that would be very much appreciated because that also interferes with our recording equipment. Um, just also want to read the emergency exit. You know, the emergency exit rules are a little bit different because we're in the auditorium, but basically you're going to be exiting through the rear doors of this room to one of the, well, not, not staircases, you're going to be going across the hall and you go, go to the main entrance and, and exit through the main entrance. I, I think the rear doors are going to be right, right there. I'm not sure whether that exit yeah, is good or not. There where the, um, out out here. Is. Okay, so the, so the main door going, going towards uh, uh, the, the front entrance is where you should go if there's an emergency. So, uh, in any case, there's a defibrillator upstairs, but um, I'll, I'll read it. In case of a medical emergency, the automated external defibrillator and first aid kits are both located in the hallway on the second floor opposite the elevator. And with that, I would uh, make a motion or ask for a motion that we approve uh, the minutes of our last meeting. So moved. Second. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Chair votes aye. And next I had a motion to uh, amend the minutes of our August 19th me meeting uh, because we just had a, a correction to make on that. So moved. Second. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Shavotai. And now on to uh, adjournments. Okay. Item four on the agenda, which is Richard Doyle, 65 Waters Edge Road, North Sea, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-62-1-52. Um, I'll move to that. Uh, I'm going to re-advertise that for our 10-7 meeting. I'm not for yet. Okay. And then item seven, eight, and nine um, will be um, re, re advertised for 1216, adjourned to 1216. I'm sorry. Okay. Do we have a second on that motion? Second. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Chair votes aye. And now we're down to the decision calendars. All right. 
Joseph Musnickley and Charlene Quinlan will be um, will have a determination at our 10-7 meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. 111 Schwanks LLC will be uh, determination on our 10-7 uh, meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Town of Southampton Housing Authority, 86 Vale Avenue. Town of Southampton Housing Authority, 116 Vale Avenue. And Town of Southampton Housing Authority, 69 Old Cork Road. We'll, be, we'll have a determination at our 10-7 meeting. Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hazy Wolf LLC will be a uh, determination on our 10-7 meeting. Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. I'd like to move to reopen Harvey Herman so we can accept written submissions. So moved. Okay, Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Uh, Mr. Sessa. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Chair votes aye. Reopen. All right, now I'll move to close it so that we can have a determination tonight. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Michael and Amy O'Brien um, will have a determination on our 10 7 me meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Kimberly McCready uh, moved to reopen so we can accept written submissions. So moved. Mr. Tuthill? Aye. Mr. DeSessa? Aye. Ms. Burgess? Aye. Mr. Daly? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Kern? Aye. Chair votes aye. And I'll move to close that now so that we can have a determination later this evening. So Second. moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nice Select Real Estate Holdings Development Corp. We'll, we'll have a determination at our 10-7 meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Scott Schlachter, uh, determination on our, at our 10-7 meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Karen and Brian Coyle will have a determination at our 10-7 meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Edward and Patricia Burke will have a determination at our October 21st meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, Robert Postma and Janet Whalen uh, move that we reopen that so we can accept written submissions. So moved. Mr. Tuthill? Aye. Mr. DeSessa? Aye. Ms. Burgess? Aye. Mr. Daly? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Kern? Aye. Uh, cheer votes aye. Oh, reopened. Now I move to close it so we can have a determination tonight. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Richard Stott? We'll have a determination, determination, excuse me, at a 10-7 meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 85 Eastway, LLC, we'll have a determination at a 10-7 meeting. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Barbara Swoslowski, uh, move to reopen to accept written submissions. So moved. Mr. Tuthill? Aye. Mr. DeSessa? Aye. Ms. Kern? Aye. Mr. Daly? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Burgess, Chair of I reopened. Now move to close with a determination later this evening. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <laughs> okay. Item one on the agenda is John and Victoria Petrillo, um, 31 East Beach Drive, North Sea, Suffolk County Tax Map. 900-42-1-9. Applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the town code. One, for the proposed dwelling on a non-conforming lot. 330-83K yards for a principal minimum side yard setback of 7.5 feet from the south side of the property line where 10 feet is permitted. And two, 330-84D pyramid height for uh, pyramid encroachment in the amount of 7,384 cubic feet, 3,413 cubic feet on the south side, and 3,971 cubic feet on the north side. 
Two, for the proposed porch with a second-story deck on the west side of the dwelling, 330-83K for a principal side yard of 7.3 feet from the south side of the property where 10 feet is permitted. Three, for the proposed deck on the west side of the dwelling, 330-11 residential district's table of dimensional regulations for an accessory setback of seven feet where 10 feet is required. And four, for the proposed mechanicals located on the north side of the property, AC units, 330-77G, placement of accessory building structures and uses in resident districts for a setback of uh, plus or minus four feet where 10 feet is required and any other relief necessary. Is there anything else? You need the no, kitchen the sink? The board has jurisdiction. You want the kitchen sink? Or what? <laughs> okay, to set the story in, Susanna, if you can just state your name and address for the record, please. Susanna Herman. There you go. <laughs> and consultants, 1319 North Sea Road, Southampton. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, if you can tell us about the application, you might want to tilt, tilt the... Tilt it down? Yeah, a little bit. It might how's, help. How's that? Okay, that's, I okay. think that should be fine. I apologize in advance. That I know you know the acoustics are terrible. Yep. I have a soft voice. I know Helen's going to struggle with that, but I'm going to do my best to articulate through the mask. Um, the Petrillos are also here. Um, John and Victoria, um, in okay. case you have any questions for them, we can sign them in okay. if necessary. Swear them in if, if necessary. I have photographs of the site, which I'll pass up. I have a copy for everybody. Okay. Um, the first few are just the house and surrounding property. And then there's a couple aerials on the back, which speak to the character of the neighborhood. Okay. The property is located at 31 East Beach Drive. It may sound familiar because you've issued a lot of variances on this stretch of property. Mm -hmm. I was before you with another application in May for 9 East Beach Drive for Ralph Petrillo, Ralph and Mia Petrillo. That is um, Mr. Petrillo's brother. Um, so a lot of this may sound familiar. It's a very similar situation. Um, the lot is 10,797 square feet. It's in an R15 zoning district, and it's only 60 feet wide. Um, there are wetlands involved. Um, the border's on Little Peconic Bay, so wetlands permits were required from the town and the DEC. Uh, in fact, we got relief from town setbacks in order to be 80 feet from the nearest wetland line where 100 feet is required. So we can't move any closer to the water. The entire street front of the property is taken up by the proposed sanitary system. Of course, there would be an IA septic system on the street side of the property. Um, we're further encumbered by extremely shallow depth to groundwater. We have 2.4 feet to groundwater, and we are in a flood zone. We're in an AE6 flood zone. So the first floor elevation has to be elevation eight. Uh, we're actually proposing the house at elevation 10 to give a little extra security from rising floodwaters and rising sea levels. Um, if you're familiar with the street, you probably know that there has been flooding in this area. So the house is proposed at an elevation of 10 feet above sea level, where eight is required. Um, the Existing house has been there since pre-1957. We just got a pre-existing CO, um, but it's only for demolition of the existing house. The house is not currently habitable. It's been flooded in uh, recent storms. Um, the pyramid relief that we're requesting is actually, I handed in revised plans uh, from the architect this week. It's actually 8,595 cubic feet which is slightly more than what was on the initial application. What was that number? 8,595. 8 okay. That's 5,333 on the south side and 3,262 on the north side. 
I'm not sure the reason for the discrepancy. The house didn't change. I think just the way it was calculated was corrected. Could you repeat the, the size? The um, south side pyramid is 5,333, and the north side is 3,262. So it's 5333 so, three, three, yep, and 3262. Yep. So even, even for this street, which is a very nice street and a really nice neighborhood in the town, it's a lot of pyramid relief, and we're going to talk about that. Right. So yep. um, speaking to pyramid relief on the street, I have copies of the other variances, which I'll hand up for the record. Mm -hmm. um, I won't go into every single detail. However, at 39 Beach Drive, um, 5,184 cubic feet at 9 each beach drive, 5,023 cubic feet at 48 east beach drive, 6,349 square feet. Directly across the street at 34 east beach drive, 9,813 cubic feet was granted. That's the what year was that? Um, not that long ago, we got that, um, the wetland permits for that project, I remember. That was 2013. So, that was eight years ago. Right. Not quite. Not so long ago. That's not so long ago. I mean, relative to. Um, mm -hmm. So, I'll hand these up. Um, oh, and one more. At 54, it's 1,794 square feet, uh, cubic feet. Um, also, if you're familiar with the street, you're aware that most of the houses are pre-existing non-conforming. There are a mm -hmm. lot of side yard setbacks that are similar to those that we are proposing. Mm -hmm. um, because of section, because we need a wetland permit, section 330.83K applies, so our side yard setbacks um, allowed are 10 feet. We're asking for a little bit of relief on the south side to go to 7 feet at the closest point. Um, the property adjacent to this to the north, just for um, the character of the neighborhood, their side yard setbacks are 7.8 and 5.6 feet. However, I will point out on the north, we are separated from that property by a 10 foot wide pedestrian right of way. So it's as if we had an additional 10 feet to that neighbor. Yeah. I'll hand up a copy of those variances and the adjacent. How much relief did the house immediately next door get? Immediately next door, which side? On the south side. The south side, that is um, the Caruso property. It's a very large house relative to that property, but that's one of the smaller cubic feet that's um, Hold on, I just handed. Um, it's a larger lot. Yeah. I know. Um, as I recall, it was over a thousand cubic feet, maybe about fourteen hundred cubic feet. The property directly to the south had about fourteen hundred square feet. It's not in the list that I provided, so that's an additional one. Um, the proposed house is not out of character as far as square footage of the house. The footprint is just over 15,000 square feet. It's got a one-car garage. It's got four very small bedrooms. Um, I'm sorry, what did you say the square footage is for the house? The footprint of the house, proposed house, is 15. 73. That's a two story house, and that includes an attached one car garage. It's a four bedroom house, but the bedrooms are quite small. It's not an excessively large house. The total roof height is well within allowable limits. We're allowed to go to elevation 42, we're only going to 37.5. The total house from first floor to roof height is only 27 and a half feet, where 32 what, feet is what are your typical. What interior ceiling heights? I'm sorry? What are the interior ceiling heights, first and second floor? First floor is nine feet. 
proposed second floor is eight foot six. So again, not excessive ceiling heights. Now you, you mentioned in the beginning that they're raising the house 10 feet, which is greater than what FEMA requires, right? Correct. Do you have the calculations um, how much the cubic foot relief would be if you only raise the house, say, eight feet or nine feet? You know those I, I do not, but I could, I could have the architect calculate those. Yeah. And, and, you know, I just want to mention regarding it going above and beyond FEMA, we encourage people who own property in uh, areas where there is danger of flooding to exceed the FEMA requirements if necessary because we want, we want people to be protected uh, from flooding issues in their homes. That having been said, if you take a look at the other applications where you just handed in decisions, uh, Susanna, I suspect if you take a look at them, each of them was scrutinized um, before we ended up at the number, numbers we ended up at. Um, and a lot of it depends on the size of the, the lot. Um, it may be that the one with the very large number may be a much smaller lot, I'm not sure. It is a little bit smaller, and the width of that lot is only 50 feet, whereas the width yeah. of this lot is 60 feet. Yeah. But that house is at a first floor elevation of 11. Mm -hmm. So they went up an additional yeah. foot farther than we're proposing. Right. right. Um, so the sizes of the house are comparable, and yeah. this lot yeah. is 10 yeah. feet wider. Yeah. So, so there's a history of us granting pyramid relief on houses on this street. Um, that is, you know, more than we've granted in other areas of the, of the town over, overall. But we still scrutinize and we, we're still going to ask questions and we're still, still going to see what can be done to reduce where it can be reduced. But I, for one, uh, want to see uh, this applicant to be, to be two feet above FEMA uh, I, I, requirements. I, I would recommend that as well. Yeah. I would not yeah. recommend them build at elevation eight feet. Yeah. I would recommend that they build at 10 feet. I, I understand. If not but, but that, but that even said, now that we have ceiling heights and we have the other information, we'll see where else we can uh, possibly reduce uh, the total number. At least, and, and again, I'm speaking for myself. I don't know where the other board members are on this, but my sense of it as, is that we're, you know, you know, we're going to look at it so, as, as we would look at any application that's, that's of, of this, this amount. Yeah. You get no, I, I agree about raising to, you know, exceed FEMA because we don't know where that's going to go. But at the same time, it's, it seems like the, the average of the neighborhood is somewhere around 5,000 cubic feet, which we're significantly over. Yeah. So in any case, then the question becomes what can be done um, to reduce uh, that, the number overall while well, keeping it two feet above FEMA. Right. Yeah. How, how many square foot is the proposed house? Uh, the footprint is 1573. Um, like 3,100 feet. Yeah, more or less. I think this, the second floor might be slightly smaller. Yeah, I mean, you, you, have a, you have a small lot, you have FEMA, and then you, they're asking for high ceilings, and I, I, I just feel it's excessive. I feel it's excessive, um, and I'd like to see where they might uh, be able to bring that number down. Uh, the 8,600, is that what you said? Yes. Yeah, that's, 80, that's a, that's a 85, lot. 85, 95. 85, 95. Yep. I yep. think it could be done a variety of ways. I mean, it could be done with roof lines. It could be done with, I mean, they're asking for two and a half feet on each side in terms of relief from the side yard to, to comply at 10. So you could you know, shrink the house five feet, which will cut out a lot of pyramid. You could change the direction of the roof lines. Um, I would like to see it closer to 5,000 personally, it's seeming to be where the, the neighborhood seems to be like that. I mean, there's a large house next door, and it seems like they, didn't, they did that with less relief. Now, that's a larger lot. It is a large but, lot. But, you know, when you, you, you buy the lot knowing what you can get, the house seems very square. So when you're dealing with a pyramid, it seems like roof lines could be affected by that. You could step, step the house forward or backwards. I think there's ways architecturally to do it to come to around 5,000 feet. Yeah, we don't have anywhere to go. Um, no, I understand that because you're, you're squeezed both ways, right. but the house might have to get smaller then, I think. That's, you know, I'm okay with the other things, but I, I need to see the, the pyramid relief be around 5,000. I agree. And I want it to be reduced as well. And I'd like it to see, to see it be around 5,000, but if you come back and you say the best we can do is six, I can live with that. 
but you know, just want to see what can be done. Okay. You just need to get the four. That's all. <laughs> I mean, the, the roof runs contrary to what the pyramid direction is, right? So if they switch the roof directions, you're going to cut out a lot. And if they're not, the ceiling is only eight six in the second floor. There's a lot of attic space up there that's not habitable space, but they can change the roof lines and eliminate a lot of pyramid and not really impact their design. Right, I'll have to talk to the architect. Of course, remember, we don't have any mechanical below FEMA. So all Correct, the mechanical room, all of the duct work, all of that mm -hmm. has to be in that attic or in mechanical. Or in a mechanical room. closet on the first or second floor. Mm -hmm. So we, we, are, we do have a lot of uh, constraints. Mm -hmm. Not just the lot size and the wetlands. Yeah. No, and we and we appreciate that. We we understand. That. Sounds like the board would like to see if you could cut it down a little bit, Susanna. All right. All right. Do you guys want to say anything? Okay. All right. uh, <laughs> Susanna, have you heard from any of the neighbors? You might have mentioned that earlier. Um, um, I did not mention that. I, I know Mr. Petrillo okay. spoke with his neighbor to the north. Susanna, back in the microphone, please. What? Back in the microphone. I'm sorry. Um, I know Mr. Petrillo did speak with the neighbor to the north uh, and answered his questions. I don't know if they um, wanted to show up tonight or not. Okay. We'll find out okay. soon enough. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, besides going over the concerns we had about Pyramid, I just want to ask generally, are we okay with the setback relief? I'm sorry. What did you say? I said, other than the problems, the concerns that we have about Pyramid, is the board, I just want to give the, before Susanna goes and works on this to redesign, I just want to make sure that the board is otherwise okay with the setback relief that's being requested. I agree with Brian on the Pyramid, and uh, I'm comfortable with the setbacks. Yeah. That they, they may need to reduce the setback because that's the only way to reduce the Pyramid. So I, I understand. Right. But, yeah. but just, you know, if, if there was, you know, a setback. If they were able to reduce numbers. the Pyramid without the setbacks, I would be comfortable with it. Yeah. I do want to point out that one of the variances that Marjorie picked up on that we didn't include in the application is um, the air conditioner units, which mm -hmm. are in the side yard about four feet from the property line where 10 is required. I just want to make sure you're not overlooking that and make sure that's an How far are those What is that? that setback? It's required to be 10. No, but what is it? It four. says plus or minus. It's four? Yeah. Well, plus or minus four. I don't have. Oh, oh but that's not on the revised survey? No. That okay. has to be on the revised survey. Okay. Yeah, okay. In, in addition, we have building department comments. I don't know if you saw them already, Susanna. I did. Okay. So if you address them um, with uh, Marjorie, that's fine. Uh, but I just wanted to make you aware that we had comments from her about the plans and um, about the survey being revised. Um, I think we've addressed yeah. all of her comments, except I think they neglected to do a dimension to the air conditioner. Okay. But I measure it at four feet. It's plus or minus four feet. We can add that. But okay. there's a uh, fence that needed to be removed. We're showing that to be removed within the um, pedestrian right of way. And we corrected the, um, the pyramid drawings. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions of members of the board or uh, Katie? Is there anyone from the public who's. Exactly. I'm sorry. Oh, you have to. Hold, hold, you have to go over to a microphone. Sorry. <laughs> This room is terrible, terrible for uh, uh, the, yet here. It's, it's really quite the problem. Hi, I'm Bill Mahoney. We have a 33 speech drive. Okay. Bill, I just have to swear you in. If you oh. state, state your full address, please. Uh, William T. Mahoney, Jr. Your, and your address? Uh, 25 Devon Place, Southampton. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. If you can tell us your comments. Okay. Um, my only concern is where the house is going to be placed on the lot. Because from this whole community, there's like a line that all of the houses are built on, the setback from the water to the front of the house. And it goes from East Beach all the way down. Um, there's a house on East Beach now that was granted permission to build the house like 30 feet further out towards the bay than any other house on either strip. And I hope that is not going to be followed. Okay, well, we have a survey submitted with the application that shows where the proposed house is. So let's see if can someone can it? show you a copy. Okay. okay. And we, and we, but, okay, you, you have to go into the microphone. I'm sorry. It, it, this doesn't show the placement in regards to the other houses okay. on either side of it. Okay. 
Just, Susanna, you have to go to the microphone. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, I, this, I this just had an aerial photo yeah, here. The, the aerial photograph that I submitted might be um, helpful if I could borrow. Okay. Sure. Up to the mic, yeah, got to go to the mic. I'm sorry. If you go to the last page, figure seven and figure eight, you see on the, I guess really figure eight, there's the Caruso house. Which is the one that's pushed way forward. Right. We're not going to be going out as far as that. Okay, we're not getting Roughly. any of this, any of this on the microphone because you guys have to be right, like just like I am, like right okay. up to it. <laughs> um, figure eight in the photographs submitted is an aerial photograph that shows this property relative to the other properties along the beach. Right. And you can see the property to the south, the Caruso property, which is the large one with the red roof, is pushed out significantly farther than the other houses. We're not going to be extending as far seaward as that house. Right. I don't have a, a relative number, but um, we're not going to be blocking the view. Yeah. Um, okay. Direction. Okay. Well, the one thing I want to mention is the, the this, aerial that shows what presently exists. It's not showing the proposed. Shows what proposed. currently exists, not Correct. what's proposed. Correct. So, so you so, say not going as far, it could go a foot further back, and that's not as far. Yep. So, Susanna, I'm not sure whether you can uh, provide this gentleman with, with some other information. Maybe, uh, you know, since we're going to be adjourning it, uh, but if you could, that would be helpful uh, to give him more of a sense or an answer to his question um, to the, you know, the best of your ability. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Is there anyone else uh, who is waiting to be heard this evening in connection with the application of Petrillo? This is for property located at 31 each East Beach Drive in North Sea. Okay, does not appear to be anybody else. So, uh, Susanna, if you want to come back up and we'll figure out when you'd like to come back. We do have a little bit of room on our agenda for our next meeting, which is in three weeks, but maybe you need a little bit longer in order to deal with the issues that we've discussed. What's the date of that meeting? Uh, October 7th. I think we could probably... I, I think the uh, the architect's local. I think he can make the revisions in that, that time frame. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm not the lead on the application, so Mike, you will be making the motion. Okay, good. So uh, make a motion to uh, continue this, leave it open for all purposes for uh, the next meeting, which will be October 7th. Second. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Bur uh, um, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Chair Vosai, thank you for being here. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Item two on the agenda is 47 Pheasant Walk in South uh, Bridgeanton, excuse me, Suffolk so County Tax Map 900 dash. 135-5-5. Applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the town code to reestablish a non-conforming lot on a filed subdivision not continu to continuously held in single and separate ownership. One, town code 330-11 residential districts table of dimensional regulations as it relates to town code 292-44 exemptions and waivers for a lot area of 59,006 feet, 6.37 square feet, where 60,000 square feet is required, and two, town code 330-82, lot width to allow a minimum road frontage of 37.56 feet at the street line where a minimum of 40 feet is required and any other relief necessary. The board has jurisdiction. Good evening. Good evening, board members. Wayne Bruin, O'Shea, Marcinson Bruin, Southampton, New York, on behalf of uh, Pheasant Walk Holdings, LLC. W Wayne, you might want to tip the microphone or I don't know you if you might want to pick it up. Yeah. yeah. If you, yeah, you can take it out. Yeah, that's good. Make it closer. There, there we there go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get everything before? <laughs> uh, not sure. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, again, Wayne Bruin, O'Shea Moore Sensing and Bruin on behalf of the applicant. Um, we're here tonight, as the notice indicated, to reestablish a lot on a filed map. The subdivision map of SAG Bridge Hampton Corp. Section 1 was filed in 1967. At that time, the property was uh, zoned A residence, which required 40,000 square feet of lots, 150 square feet, uh, 150 feet of uh, front uh, lot width. In 1972, as part of the comprehensive rezoning, the subdivision map in the area was rezoned to R60, and it remains R60 today. The subject property contains, as the notice indicated, 59,006 square feet, which is just shy, a little less than 1,000 square feet shy of the 60,000 square foot requirement. And also this parcel was on a uh, cul-de-sac and had certain frontage on that cul-de-sac, which um, is actually a couple feet shy of the 40 feet of frontage that is normally on, on a street. We're trying to reestablish this lot on the file map. And just so you know, the, the lot was purchased, a, a little back history, the, the subdivision map, and we provided a copy of that subdivision map in the record, but this property in the adjoining lot to the west, lots 50 and 51, are pretty much an anomaly in this map. They were both, uh, the lot 50 to the west is over 60,000, and this one was just shy, shy of 60,000. The other 52 lots in this 54 lot subdivision are all about 40,000 square feet. So this was, uh, these are the only two lots in that map, and they were pretty close to 60,000 square feet. Lot 50, the lot to the west, um, was acquired and a house was built there in 1975. Um, about five or six years later, the prior owners acquired the subject lot, lot 51, to the east because they wanted to build a tennis court. And as you know, the code until 19. Uh, until 2010 did not allow uh, an accessory structure to be built on a lot without a principal. So they were told by the building department the only way they could get a tennis court is if they acquired the lot next door. They acquired the lot in the same name, separate deed, it's maintained as a separate tax parcel. Ordinarily I'd be in front of you trying to argue that this should be uh, considered yes. single and separate. Correct. However, the one part of the test, do they function together or were they intended to function together, yep. clearly we wouldn't be able to meet. So we we're here not. for the requisite right. lot, right. area, and frontage variances to basically reestablish this mm -hmm. lot. The uh, current owners purchased in 2006 and their intent is to demolish the tennis court and build a, a single family dwelling. Um, the, Lot area, as I mentioned in our petition, is uh, just shy of 1,000 square feet, which represents about 1.66% deviation from the 60,000 square foot requirement. So in other words, it's uh, essentially de minimis. The um, reduction in the 40 foot frontage to 37 feet is, is, is de minimis as well. Um, we have heard from our neighbors, predominantly in the neighborhood, um, that there's no objections. Um, this lot is controlled by my client with uh, some other lots in the neighborhood, so they clearly wouldn't have objections to their proposal as well. So that's the argument. I believe our petition is, is there. Um, it identifies how we meet the tests. If the board has any particular questions, I'm available to answer those. <coughs> so, oh, go no, ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna, gonna ask, so the relief is to reestablish a non-conforming lot. So if we grant the requested uh, relief for lot area and lot width, that's all you need or do you have to go to the planning board? That's it. No, uh, actually, the planning board, if uh, under the subdivision regulations, if you're reestablishing a lot, um, and this board does that on a on a file map that was filed after 1957, in other words, when there was zoning, 
the, the subdivision regulations, and I mentioned that in our petition, actually do uh, exempt that from subdivision review. If we had alter lot lines or something like that, you know, then that would be a question this board is can you uh, obviate the need for the variance by going to the planning board and moving a lot line over, then, uh, you know, that would require planning board approval and re-subdivision and everything else. So the key here, and, and frankly, we looked at that alternative and there isn't much you could do to get the square footage for both lots and the frontage. Uh -huh. So. We're here, and it does not require planning board approval. Okay. Brian, you got a question? No, I, I drove the neighborhood. I saw that. It seems like it fits in. I know this board has done what's requested. You know, recently I know we've done some similar relief on Strong's Lane and Watermill. Uh, and there was another one in Bridgehampton in the last few years of reestablishing. So um, I don't have an issue with it. And like I said, these lots, two lots are oversized compared to the other 52 lots right. in this subdivision. So. And it's a cul-de-sac, so the relief of the lot frontage, you know, there's, there's enough frontage there, you know, for a yeah, it's 30 seat. driveway and everything else. If so, it was a flag yeah. lot, you only need 20. 20 right. And so, I mean, state code is 15, you right. have 37, so we have enough for access. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. And the reality is the relief that's being requested is about as minimal as could be. Yep. Correct. <laughs> I don't have a problem with it either. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions or members of the board? Oh, Wayne, have you heard from any of the neighbors? Uh, like I said, we're, uh, about the only neighbors are to our north, and we have not Didn't heard hear. from them directly. Okay. I know my client corresponds with them, and if they did have some concerns, they would have directed it to him right away. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, is there anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard this evening in connection with, in connection with the application uh, of uh, Pheasant Walk Holdings, LLC? This is for property located at 47 uh, Pheasant Walk in Bridgehampton. Brian? If not, Brian, it's yours. Okay, seeing or hearing no one, uh, move that we close the public hearing, leaving the written record open until October 1st with a decision on our, 10 uh, on our October 21st meeting. Second. Thank you. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Cohn. Oh, yes, Kern. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Ms. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Um, Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Chair votes aye. <coughs> Mr. Tuttle? Yeah, I'm getting there, Bob. <laughs> Okay. Item three on the agenda is 95 Inlet Road West LLC in Shinnecock Hills, 95 Inlet Road West, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-176-1-1. Applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the town code to legalize a frame shed 12.2 feet by 14.9 feet constructed without the benefit of a building permit. 330-11, residential district's table of dimensional regulations for an accessory distance from street setback, front yard of 13 feet from the westerly property line, North Beach Road, and two, 330-76D, placement of accessory building structures and uses in all districts, and 330-83C yards, to allow the shed to remain within the required front yard for the principal dwelling uh, building on a non-conforming lot and any other relief necessary. The board has jurisdiction. Good evening. How are you? you can Hi, state how are you? I'm doing okay. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Gina Rigdon, DKR Shores, here to represent 95 Inlet Road, LLC. And your address? Oh, 235 Troutbrook Lane in Aquabog. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you. If you can tell us about the application. Okay. We have an existing shed um, that was installed without the benefit of a permit. Um, it's 182 square feet total. Okay. <laughs> I've never done this before. I feel like I'm singing karaoke. Um, it's 12.2 
feet wide by 14.9, that includes the roof line. Yep. It's located on 13 feet from the arc of North Beach Road. Um, Inlet Road, uh, even though it's a street, um, is the rear. Anything opposite the water is the rear. So our front, we have a very small lot. Um, it's only a little over 14,000 square feet with a very, very small house, um, 1,334 square feet, and a very constrained lot because we have technically three front yards. So we have the water, Cold Spring, Inlet, North Beach Road, and Inlet Road, which is my rear. So the applicant, um, actually his contractor had called Town of Southampton, like most do, and said, do I need a permit for a shed? Apparently he was told no. Um, he did, and he would need it regardless conservation board um, or in a conforming location. So... What was the name of the contractor? I have no idea. I'd like to know. I would too. I have no idea. I think it was one of those uh, built already sheds that gets moved in. So I don't think it was actually built on site. I think it was prefab. Yeah, he probably told the building department that it was going to be or right. that was going to be a conforming location. And I don't know about the size of the shed, but if it was going to be in a conforming location, depending on the size, it may not have needed a permit. So uh, who knows what the conversation Correct. Was. They didn't do their homework. Yeah. So here I am. I understand. Um, this has already been in front of Marty. Um, he is okay with the shed and the placement where it is. So here is my argument. If I move the shed, it will interfere with the new IA OWTS system we're planning, um, which I have some copies of photocopies of where it's supposed to go. I am waiting for the engineer to give me final design. Um, this actually had a former plan that was approved by the Conservation Board for a conventional sanitary system in the same location, which is in the front yard, I should say, the inlet roadside near the road. Um, so that is my space I need for a new sanitary system. Um, there is also, which I will pass out in a moment, um, a very large, stunning red maple adjacent, just up against the corner of the house. I would try not to disturb that even during the sanitary system um, because it, as you know, maples are a, a wetland indicative species. They have fluted trunks and what you don't see under the gravel is the fluted trunk system. I'm going to try not to deserve, disturb while I'm doing the sanitary system. Well, I wish you luck with that because that may not happen. So, <laughs> The shed, if I had to move it, I could shift it towards the house, which could potentially hurt the tree. I could shift it towards the water, and that would make Marty not very happy. But that would be up to the board. I have about maybe five to seven feet to play with that might not hurt the tree or be in the way of the sanitary system. So if I could just pass out some pictures, I want to explain them to you. Sure. I don't know about you folks, but I'm more concerned about the septic and the, uh, yep, yep. And the uh, okay. say the tree. The, the first thing I want to give you. Oh, oh, oh. You can't talk. Up, 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 up. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. Can go ahead. Yep. Okay, so those are photocopies of the space I need for my sanitary system with a pink circle where my red maple is. Now I'm going to show you pictures of the red maple, which is why I really would like to keep it. I don't know if it's going to survive the installation of the new sanitary I system. don't know either, but I, I these, are drawn, these are drawn on, though. I mean, these aren't... Yeah, I know, I know. I, Katie, the engineer's working on it. I don't have the design for the new IA system yet. So you folks know, when you have a new sanitary system, often your yard becomes a desert afterwards. So, you know, that's the reason I'm bringing it up. Right. <laughs> Everything is gone in order to install the system. Okay, I printed out a couple of larger pictures 
So what you can really see in these is the fact that you can't see the shed from the road at all. It's highly vegetated. Um, Mr. Manani has been voted a good environmental steward by the Conservation Board, has planted numerous native species, and uh, retained um, natural uh, vegetation as well on the corner lot. Okay, what I'm going to present next, <laughs> as Marjorie had stated in her 831-21 assessment of the application, she wanted to make sure it wouldn't interfere with pyramid law. So I'm going to distribute to you some smaller uh, reduced copies, but I do have hard scale original signed sealed copies I picked up on the way here. Candice, if you want two of them tonight, I will give them to you. If you want them in the morning, I will give them to you then. Tonight, got it. How much did it cost to, to buy or, and install the shed? That's, sh that's, sh sorry. I just put in a shed. <laughs> and um, it cost about $8,000 okay. to have that shed built and put in. And put in. Okay. So it is on a concrete slab. So if I had to move it, I would have to rip up the concrete slab and then put a new concrete slab. Yep. So. But we're not talking about financial, uh, you know, significant financial hardship if you had to give up the shed. But obviously your clients want it and that's why you're here. So not, not that I'm necessarily saying that the relief is going to be denied, but I'm just pointing out that... Um, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. The, I completely the agree. The realities of this are not a uh, huge financial loss. On the other hand, you know, you're here to do, to do your job, and you're asking us to grant relief for the shed. Um, one of the things with, with sheds is if we grant relief for sheds, we have to make sure that, they're, that the shed is structurally sound. I don't know whether you submitted anything on that as of yet. You'll see the building plans that were actually drawn by an architect. Okay. Um, I could have that shed affidavit yeah. um, saying it's structurally sound yes. and present that to we're, you. We're going to need course. that. Yeah. I absolutely would do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So what I'd also like to point out is not only can you not see the shed, um, it's one feet away, actually, from being out of Conservation Board jurisdiction. This property actually benefits from an NJ letter. So I could shift it towards the road more, but I don't think that would make you guys any happy. And if I shifted it towards the water, I don't think that would make Marty very happy. I could maybe shift it towards the house and not compromise either location of the new sanitary or the tree approximately five to seven feet. So 13 would become 20, ideally, if I had to. But let me point out one more thing. Um, if this was a regular size shed under the definitions of the 335, uh, less than 120 square feet, or I should say 120 square feet or less, um, it would be able to be placed 10 feet from the side and the rear. On a waterfront lot, that's what you guys allow. So it's a slightly bigger than a, not even needing a building permit. Um, and then normally a shed slightly smaller would be able to be placed 10 feet from the side and rear. We're at 13. So tell me why you wouldn't want to have it at 20 feet instead of 13 feet. Um, just the fact that it would cause disturbance, and I hate causing disturbance. Um, we would have to redo. We'd have to actually pick it up, completely move it out of the way, build a new slab or footings um, in an area where there's an extensive root system of a red maple, and place it on the foundation, which could either buckle from the root system underneath, eventually, sometime in the future, or, com or compromise, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the footings. Yeah. And uh, if it's on a slab, it would definitely yeah. compromise and crack the slab. Yeah. I'll tell you something else. I am not comfortable voting for relief for 
this shed unless I knew who the contractor was who created the situation? I could definitely ask who. I think, like I said, it was pre-built and yeah. brought in. I th yeah, I just want. But to, I'm I, not sure who. I, I understand, but I, at least at a minimum, I would want information in the record as to who created this situation. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, I, I don't necessarily buy that it's the building department. I, I don't deny that there was a phone call, but I suspect that that phone call was about a conforming shed. Um, but in any case, that information I think would be very helpful. I would like to know that as well. Yeah. Because he's not allowed to use that guy anymore. <laughs> um, and then the other thing is, if we're going in the direction, well, to, to consider whether to go to the 13, from the 13 feet to the 20 feet or any other location, the, the cost, the financial impact. Uh, on, on the applicant of doing that, I think was a consideration. So I don't know if you can get an estimate on, as to what it would cost. It's probably around $3,000. Um, it's 600 to move it, and then the foundation, um, a new concrete footing, and then demoing that mm -hmm. footing, mm -hmm. uh, it's around 3000 Why don't you just get an estimate for it, all right? Yeah, I could do that. Okay. Not from the same guy that put it in. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. No. So the question is what we want to do. Um, Anybody here? Well, we can certainly ask. Um, uh, any other questions or members of the board? Is the board comfortable with the survey showing the hand drawn in um, septic system? Not necessarily. No, no not necessarily. I mean. It's going to be probably at least three months for me to get the engineer and the uh, surveyor to coordinate and get this into the health department but properly. But your testimony is that you can't move it because of that. The good news is the shed's already there, so you don't sheds have to Shed's already the there, so. Right. Well, then again, we don't want to encourage people to put uh, structures up without permits by I agree. Giving, giving them a break that we wouldn't give somebody who had a proposed well, there, shed. There are also no, comments from the building department. I totally agree, and 30% of what I do is yeah, yeah, people yeah. doing stupid stuff. Okay, so um, <laughs> Atina, did you see the comments from the building department? I did. You did, okay. Have so you that was basically them? pyramid, and then uh, the other note on the garage, which is technically out of board jurisdiction, and I'm working on it. Okay. I'm discussing it with uh, code enforcement. Michael Chi is, is on speed dial, because okay. the neighbor keeps calling. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, the garage does say no habitable space in the CFO. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Brian? The C of O says no habitable space in the garage? On the second floor. Okay. Uh, the z old zoning board decision specifically said no habitable space on the second floor. There is no second floor. It says no habitable space? No, correct. Or, it, or yes. second floor without approval. So it doesn't say no habitable space. I can't, for apply, the I can't floor. apply yet until I have health department. In a detached accessory, I need health department approval first before building department will accept an application. That's just the rules. I can't apply yet. I need the sanitary system permit. But I will. I'm working on it. And, and another thing I wanted to mention, you know, if we waited three months for the, uh, the survey, you know, with the, with the actual you know, uh, um, sanitary system put in, well, the shed's going to be there for the next three months anyway, as far as I know. So we could just, yeah. you know, wait. That's what I mean. It's not we like they're holding up anything. Right. Right. So, so um, I'm, I'm having a little trouble hearing down here, but is the idea that the applicant's going to come back and show movement towards the house for the shed and, the co and what the cost would be to do that? Is that what you're also The board saying? has asked me for an estimate to move the shed, how much it would cost. The board has asked to know who the contractor was for okay. their own information and everyone else's. Um, and the board asked if I was going to show the sanitary system as a reason why I can't move the shed, that that sanitary system be placed on the survey, or at least on a site plan prepared by uh, a licensed engineer, and that licensed engineer has been retained as uh, Paul DeLandro Andrews. Is it your understanding that if you place the um, sanitary system where you've suggested on this that you will not be able to move the shed? Not towards the road, not towards Inlet Road. No. Towards North Beach Road. Hey, go crazy if you want me to move it but, to move closer. But could you <laughs> move so. it, I'm sorry, could you move it closer to the house? Um, I, I might be able to move it okay, closer to the what house. I to clarify. But if I did, if I 
poured a slab. There is a fluted trunk red maple system. So the root system actually goes over the surface rather than down in the ground. Um, and that root system, if I poured a slab and I moved it closer to the house, would eventually be compromised because the roots will come up through the concrete and buckle it and compromise the slab. Is it my understanding that there's a driveway there now on top of the root system of the maple? There's no driveway. It's all gravel. gravel. It's pavers it's gravel and gravel. It's gravel. Yeah. It's pavers and there's a paver walkway yeah. and there's gravel. It's all gravel. He yeah. doesn't even have grass. Yeah. And, and Susan, that the, the tree may be gone anyway because of the new septic system. It may not make it through right. uh, installation of the septic system. So I don't know that we can base uh, uh, where we locate the shed or approve the shed to be located on the tree because the tree probably is, unfortunately, uh, its days are numbered. Um, I, w I would say. It's possible. Yeah. The new sanitary will yeah, compromise yeah, the yeah. tree. Now, it is now, possible. Yeah. Now, I also want to mention that in normal circumstances, if, I, if we had a contractor doing this and we knew who it was, we would be asking you to bring that contractor in to explain what happened. I'm not sure whether other board members are about this, but I wanted to mention that as well, um, that that's what we would typically do. I'd like to say Sure. I came to see the shed. Yesterday, and we, Helen needs the microphone yeah, next to yeah. It's a beautiful property. He did a really good job. What? It's a beautiful property. It's a beautiful It's, it's stunning. It's so small. Yeah. I couldn't even think of moving that shed an inch. The house is the one bedroom house. Yes. It's, it's a so very small, small house. He needs Everything the space. Everything there is so small. Yeah. And I just, I have no problem with this application. And I think it's just. Uh, uh, it's just been done in a beautiful, beautiful way. And right. The shed's kind of tucked back into the trees, so you can't even it. see it. Like, it's very tastefully done. Yes. The whole property. Yeah. It was done without a building permit yes, for the sir. shed. That's a bit of a problem. <laughs> tastefully done without a building permit. Well, that's a bit of a problem. Contractors should know better. I mean, it's one thing for property owners to do something like this, but for a contractor, particularly a contractor, if it turns out it's someone who's licensed in the town of Southampton uh, to have... I don't know. Well, I don't to, think to, so. You have done this. It's just not to be taken lightly. Um, yes, it's just a shed. It's not a house. Who, know, who knows what, what this contractor has done elsewhere? Adam wants his opportunity at public flogging. You know what I, mean? right. I, I'm, I'm, I usually I'm just, take the public flogging for everybody. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm just saying, if it, if, if it were a normal circumstance where, you know, the, the, the you know, the applicant says, well, the contractor said I did this, we'd say, okay, bring the contractor in, let's find out what happened. But we, you know, don't really even have the, we don't have the name of the contractor tonight. Um, I don't know where the rest of the board is on this, I'm just mentioning that I, you know. I would like to yeah, hear yeah. from the rest of the board, please. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I just think, uh, again, that um, it's almost much to do about very little. I mean, we've had so many cases where people have built houses. I know, bigger without fish. Without permit. And right. here's this minuscule shed, really. And to think that this is uh, so much that's being said about it. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, I, like I, I said, don't in, agree, I don't agree with it. In normal nothing, circumstances. Nothing's being said is different than other would, applications with Asbel. Oh, I, I completely no, nothing's, agree. Nothing's being different in this application than other Asbels at all. But. In normal circumstances, if the shed were a little bit smaller, it would be able to be placed 10 feet to the side and rear. And it completely conforms with that ideal. So, you know, that is what I'm really Do you have a con board permit? I know you said Marty was okay with it, but you, do you have a I permit? Have, I have a, a recent letter from Marty saying um, I have an amended administrative wetlands permit with a cover letter stating that please just uh, modify the permit to include the shed. I'll give it to you. All right, let's move on. Yep, I think so. Are you moving? We'll be moving in a second. Um, okay. All right. Just, okay. Okay. 
I don't have a problem with the shed right now. Well, I this is from 2014. I would like to see an improved septic system there and save the tree. That's what I'm looking for. Well, the tree not, may not be saved, but that's all right. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, any other comments? Okay. And Gina, whenever you're done, I want to see if there's anyone from the public. Well, that's the end Okay, let's see if anyone. Okay. All right. Yeah. Is there anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard in connection with the application of uh, uh, Manani? This is for property located at 95 Inlet Road West in Shinnecock Hills. Nobody? Okay. How Okay. Okay. Just Helen? submit it later, Agina. Give you a copy of the admin permit that was renewed with the cover letter stating please modify it to include the shed but he had no problem with it okay all right um helen it's yours written submissions till october 1st okay and uh, we'll have a decision on october 21st okay um and i will get you both of you. Um, that recent letter from Marty, I'm just <coughs> yep. escaping right now. Okay. All and right. Other people yeah, are yeah, online. Yeah. We'll see. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, we have a second on the motion. Second. Um, Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. As long as the chair is okay, I'm all right. All right. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you, Gina. <clears throat> okay, we're down to item five on the agenda, which is Brian O'Sullivan, 32 Cove Road, North Sea, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-61-1-44. Give me all the shadows on that one's on the scene. Mm -hmm. Applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the town code. One, for the proposed garage with porch addition to the existing dwelling on a non-conforming lot. 330-11, residential district stable of dimensional regulations. For a principal front yard setback of 40 feet, where 60 feet is required from the northerly property line, Cove Road, and a principal front yard setback of 56.2 feet, where 60 feet is required, from the Westerly property line, Waters Edge Road. Two, to the proposed swimming pool, 330-11, for an accessory a side yard setback of 60, 16 feet, where 20 feet is required, and <clears throat> an accessory distance from street setback front yard of 58.4 feet, where 70 feet is required, from the Westerly property line, Waters Edge Road. And two, 330-76D, placement of accessory building structures and uses in all districts, and 330-83C yards to allow the swimming pool to be located within the required minimum side yard for the principal building. And three, for the proposed porch addition to the existing dwelling Cove Road, 330-11 residential district stable dimension regulations for a principal front yard setback of 57 feet plus or minus where 60 feet is required. And four, to legalize a wood deck constructed in the south side of the, of the building without the benefit of a building permit. 330-11 for an accessory side yard setback of five feet where 20 feet is required and two, 330-76D, placement of accessory building structures and uses in all districts, and 330-83C yards to allow the deck to remain within the required minimum side yard for the principal building and any other relief necessary. The board has jurisdiction. I, Mr. O'Sullivan, you can come up. Yep, I know Candace is looking for Carl. <laughs> Tell him to come back in November. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'd like to wait for Carl to uh, represent. Um, but I, I understand. Get started, but if you'd like. If, if he if he's not available, if he left or you know isn't, isn't able to come in a minute or two, we may have to yeah, second call. I think call. Candace went to get him. Why don't you just start start well, telling the board about your property? Sure. I'll we'll probably have to swear you in first. If you can state your name and address, please. Uh, Brian O'Sullivan, 32 Cove Road. 
Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Brian O'Sullivan, 32 Cove Road. Okay, and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, well, your attorney's here, so uh, you're off the hook. <laughs> sorry, the door locks. It oh, you were having problems know. with that. Yeah. You can't just save me. My apologies. Wow. <laughs> that was intentional, Mr. Benacosta. Carl, Carl we're, we're ready for you. Anytime. We locked that door on purpose for you. <laughs> we just wanted to see how you'd respond. <laughs> Good to see you all. Uh, this is a variance. We're asking for uh, enumerated relief on 32 Cove Road, which is located in the Southampton Cove subdivision. A little history of that subdivision. It was subdivided in 1950 before zoning and has experienced several up zones. Currently, it's zoned R40 which puts some burdens on the property as the majority of homes are 25,000 square feet, the parcels are 25,000 square feet and below. Because of that, you've actually seen a lot of work from this subdivision. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Um, this specific lot is located on a corner with, and because of that, not only is it undersized, it's 25,000 square feet, uh, it has three front yards, so it's exceedingly burdened. As a result, any development is likely going to need, any development which would be available to most lots would need a variance, and which is why Mr. O'Sullivan is here today. Mr. O'Sullivan brought the application on his own to this point, um, and because of that, I may defer to him if there are specific questions. He just asked me to come uh, stand in for him at the hearing, which I almost did. <laughs> uh, Looking around the, the uh, property, I think... Carl, Carl, you just have to watch with the microphone. Maybe do you I want to take walk it out away? And, uh, sure. yeah. Looking around the property, the first, uh, obviously the first apparent request for relief we're looking for is in the front yard. And this is actually the point where we're asking for the most relief. The existing home is located 63.8 feet from the, from the front yard line, which is conforming. Uh, the applicants are requesting the addition of a front yard porch which would be 57.7 feet from the uh, property line, a, a variance request of 2.3 feet. And then most, uh, most encumbering would be the addition of the proposed garage, which is 40 feet from the uh, front yard line on Cove Road, 58.6 feet, and 58.6 feet from the front yard line on Water's Edge. So we're asking relief there off of Cove in the amount of 20 feet, and off of water's edge in the amount of 1.4 feet. Addressing the uh, relief off of Cove, obviously 20 feet is, is a considerable variance. I would direct the board's attention across the street to a variance that was issued uh, recently on 22 Cove, uh, 22 Cove Road, literally right across the street. There, there was a variance uh, granted it's variance number D017004. It was issued by this board in January of 2017. And what it did was grant relief for a pool, which is an accessory structure requiring a 70-foot setback under the R40 to 30 feet. So a significant variance was granted across the street. In addition, the home although existing by nonconformity, pre-existing nonconformity, is itself only 30 feet from the, from the uh, uh, front yard. Again, drawing to the home directly adjacent to the south, that address is 5 Knoll Road. You'll note that they have a garage on that property, which is only 43.6 feet from the, and attached to the principal dwelling, which is only 43.6 feet from the front yard. So again, very much in line with the character of the neighborhood. These are the two variances I pulled from properties directly abutting this parcel. Um, there are many examples throughout this community of such variances. Um, so again, that addresses the yard, uh, the, the porch, again, which we're asking for a variance of 2.3 feet, the garage, which off of Cove Road, a variance of 20 feet, and off of Water's Edge, a, variant, a variance of 1.4 feet. Off the side of the garage is a small porch. That porch is going to be used in conjunction with the pool, which I'll talk about uh, next, as a cabana and storage area. The porch itself is 56.2 feet off of Water's Edge, 
Um, again, so for that, we would need a 3.8-foot uh, variance for the porch. The pool is an accessory structure. As a result, as an accessory structure setback from the front yard in an R40, it would need 70 feet. We are asking for a distance of 58.4 feet, or 12.6 feet, or I'm sorry, 11.6 feet in relief from the uh, permitted setback for the accessory structure. Again, directly across the street, uh, this board granted a variance for a, a pool of similar size to be uh, 40 feet in relief. And we are asking for 11.6. Turning to the back of the home, there is a wood deck that is existing and we are seeking to legalize. This, the home was built um, as a non, in, it's an existing nonconformity. Again, it was built when this was C zone, which is akin to R20. And when it became uh, R40, the, there was ex existing nonconforming setbacks of 18.4 feet off the side yard. Uh, as you know, in an R40, 20, 20 uh, feet off the side is the, is the minimum side yard setback. The existing deck is 4.3 feet off of the side yard. Now, there's a few things to consider here. One, the neighbor most affected, that's 5 Knoll Road. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. 5 Knoll Road is the neighbor most affected by that. This relief, it's the neighbor directly to the south of this property. Uh, has a variance that was granted some time ago in 86, uh, subsequent to the last upzoning, which allowed this parcel, parcel to have R15 zoning. So as a result, the side yard is 15 feet that's permitted in the adjoining lot. Um, moreover, so this relief is not as drastic when you consider what he's permitted on his lot. Moreover, my, my client is uh, very familiar with this um, individual and he has expressed support to him for the variance. Who built the wood deck? He did. Okay, uh, then we're going to have to talk to him. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, not, no. Well, when, when you're done. When we're done. Call, yes. it's fine. Uh, additionally, although not advertised, there was a miscommunication at some point during the process. There is a, a bit of pyramid relief that's required. The proposed uh, additions will call for two dormers. And although, again, it's not advertised, we're hoping that the board would consider um, this, this portion of the application under the and any further relief deemed necessary by the board uh, portion of the advertisement. Um, do you have the pyramid calculation? So there are two dormers that are proposed on the uh, south side of the home. And I believe these plans were submitted earlier today. They're updated. They are stamp plans by the engineer, and they show that the dormers uh, re create, require 75 cubic feet in pyramid relief. So a relatively minor degree of, cubic, uh, of re pyramid relief in the grand scheme. And those are the, uh, those are the requests of your, for relief that we're making today. For, for the pyramid, that would be for what, a proposed one-story addition? What, what is it? What just the dormers. Oh, and the one-story addition. Yeah, they're, they're adding a second story. That's right. And just the dormers of that second story. So we have, do we have an idea of the amount of pyramid relief altogether? Or you might have Total is 75 square feet. 70. I'm, I'm sorry. Cubic feet, excuse 75. me. 75. 75, 75 cubic feet, okay. sorry. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of relief. <laughs> <laughs> so it's relatively minor, yes. Okay. All right. Um, there is a, oh, and I just want to mention this about the, the wooden deck. Down the street, at 36 Water's Edge, there is, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's the wrong end. At 40 Water's Edge, excuse me. There's a home that, uh, that exists with a deck that's one foot, a wooden deck that's one foot from the, prop, from the side yard. So there is examples in this area of homes with such. Does that have, does that have a variance? No, no variance. I Pre, see. Pre-existing. No. Okay, pre-existing. Okay. I'm just saying for the character of the community, such, such yeah. structures do exist. Okay. All right. Well, um, I, for one, just would like to hear from um, uh, the applicant just about the facts and circumstances related to the wood deck uh, being constructed without a permit. Sure.
Okay. If you can just uh, t uh, uh, t t tell us uh, how it, it transpired that the that the wood deck went up without a permit. Sure. Um, so, as you can see, I have three fronts. So the house really only has it really has no backyard, right? So the only private area we have in our home is that area. It when I bought the house, it had a small existing patio, and uh, you know I'm I'm in the trade, so I'm in. Uh, involved in a lot of building sites and I see a lot of stuff that happens and I talk to a lot of contractors and I was under the impression at that time that if I were to build a deck that was within 12 or uh, 12 inches from grade that it was considered a patio now apparently uh, that's false information but under I thought that was the case and uh, you know instead of barbecuing in my grass I built a deck <laughs> you know and that is within 12 inches of grade but I believe, as I understand it today, that does not classify as patio and still does need uh, a building permit, and in, which, in this case, uh, perhaps a variance. So yeah, I apologize. Okay. Well, and I appreciate that. We just, you know, when there are as-built structures, whenever possible, we want to know, you know, how that transpired only because we have too many uh, as-built that, that go on. And, you know, and, and if you're in the business especially sure. and you have a doubt, a doubt or a question as to whether you need a permit or not, always better to contact the, the billing department and, and, and find out. But I appreciate the fact that you're here and you're trying to rectify it. Sure. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions from members of the board? I, I actually went to see the property. Um, it has some challenges. I mean, it has topography challenges. There's a big dip on the one side. Well, I guess it's on the water's edge side of the On property. the west side, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that's where you plan to put the pool. Yes. So how are you going to accommodate that? It looks like a four-foot drop. In fact, the pool is more set toward the back end. And the front end is where it drops off the front corner. I guess the uh, northwest corner is where it drops off the most. So towards the back, it rises. Really, it rises all the way back towards the south property line. So there's area up there. And that actually, the whole creation of uh, what I've drawn up here um, is trying to work with that slope uh, in a way that I can create uh, that backyard space that I lack, right? And hence, uh, pushing up the garage to create a privacy area towards the back. But I'm well within, I'm not off of that. As you can see, I think it's uh, like seven feet above grade or above, you know, uh, sea level, right? Uh, at that point. So it's, it's actually at a higher point uh, where it's already, and in, in laying out the foundations, it will create um, a an area in which the pool, it's actually already there. It's, it's, uh, it actually works pretty well. It's, I, I spent a lot of time uh, walking the property, measuring the property, you know, understanding the elevations in order to get this to work. It's one of the reasons I had to poke over that, you know, the, the house exists so far to the back of the property line uh, that it's hard to go up at all with the pyramid. Um, I was able so, to do it by going down. Yeah. Uh, Can and creating I ask a split you a question level. about the deck, which is very close to that fence? I mean, it is really right on top of the fence. And your neighbor on the other side is a much, you know, more extensive setback from that side yard with trees that he's put, planted. You said you're, you were concerned about privacy, and that's why you put the deck in. With the new pool construction and stuff like that, would you be able to accommodate your privacy needs and not use that deck? Uh, it helps to give more of an area for sure. Um, where the deck is, this lot behind us, um, Steve Prisby, uh, friendly with, you know, great guy, beautiful house, um, but that was just built. Uh, we had all the privacy we ever wanted on that back deck before because there was nothing there, right? And so, honestly, after the, the property sold and the house was built, uh, what once was was not anymore, and it's not to anybody's uh, you know fault. But we're trying to create a space more away from. Well, I'm just each asking other. whether you know, in terms of whether we grant the variance on the deck, whether okay. we do that or not, based on the fact that you are trying to come up with alternatives to that. Say that again. I'm sorry. 
you know, you've got the deck there and you said it was for privacy reasons that you had it and you needed to, but I'm just saying it's very close to the fence and can you get your privacy needs met through the accommodations around the new pool construction? Certainly I'm going to have more privacy area over here and, and so it's not as necessary as it once was, yes. You know, it is built at this point and it, of course, I understand I did it incorrectly and if I have to remove it, I have to remove it, but I, I hope to keep it. Okay. And speaking of the, of the, the deck, um, I do, would like to get an estimate as to what the financial hardship would be on the applicant if the deck were to be removed or removed or moved to a conforming location, I should say. Certainly. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Not because we're saying you're going to have to remove it, but we need it as part of the record. I yep. can see why you'd like that information. <laughs> okay. Which is consistent, again, with what we do with ASBELTS. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions from members of the board or Katie? I really don't have an issue um, with the requested relief. I'm looking at the pool. It's a 15 by, I think, 25 feet. That's it's a, a small pool. Yeah. small pool. Yeah, you didn't try to overdo it. Um, and it's got a lot of constraints. You know, fronts three roads. Um, and I don't think you're asking for too much, so I don't have an issue with it. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard this evening in connection with the application of O'Sullivan? This is for property located at 132 Cove Road in North Sea. If not, Susan, it's yours. Okay, so... Oh, I'm sorry, 32 Cove Road, North Sea, not 132. So I move to, um, to have written submissions due on October 1st with the decision on October 21st. Second. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you for being here. Good to see you all. You too. I'll see you on Zoom. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, re advertised applications. Item six is Thomas and Eva DeVito, 129 Shore Road in North Sea. Suffolk County Tax Map 900-76-2-16. If to read it. Yes, ma'am. Look at number channel. I know, sorry. We have, we have to read it, so we'll just be a second. No worries. Applicant requests relief from following provisions of the town code for a proposed three-story dwelling 330-11 residential district stable dimension regulations for a proposed uh, three-story dwelling. Three dwelling. Sorry, doesn't say it there, but and um, for a proposed re required rear lot setback of 20.3 feet, where 30 feet is required. Two, 330-11 to allow the proposed dwelling to be three stories where a maximum of two stories is permitted. And three, 330-84D pyramid height law for a proposed encroachment in the amount of 1,621 cubic feet, 940 cubic feet on the south side, and 535 cubic feet on the north side, and 146 cubic feet on the east side. And any other relief necessary? The board has jurisdiction. Good evening. I, I know in my notes I previously swore you in. Katie, on a, on a re add, I don't, do I need to swear Sean in again? Can't hurt. Okay. All right. Uh, Sean, if you can state your name and address, please. Sean Barron, 124 Pleasure Drive, Flanders, New York. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. If you can uh, tell us where we are with the application. Uh, so basically, it, the reverb in here is insane. Um, we're, this is a reapplication. We had a hearing previously uh, several months ago. We closed the hearing. Um, yeah, if you want to just yeah, lift it up. Do I get to walk around? There we go. No. That's better. <laughs> um, we had, this is basically, we closed the public hearing last, last time it was heard um, with the caveat that if we needed a relief for a third story, that we would have to 
reopen and re-advertise the hearing. So that's basically what was determined. Um, it is considered a three-story, so we were, we're back for variance relief for, uh, for the third story in addition to the pyramid. Explain to us what the, how they're considering it a three-story for the record. Oh, that's for the building department. I mean, that, that's, it's new to me. Previously, it's stuff like this when right. in they a flood the zone, they've reinterpreted the law. But so now it's considered a three-story dwelling. Um, full disclosure, they, they made it three stories now, too. Since we're getting the variance, they added a little more height. That's why you'll notice the pyramid relief is a little bit more than it previously was. It's, it's still very minor as far as pyramid variances go. Okay. But what's some, on the first floor? What's that? What's on the first floor? That's likely why it's considered a three-story. If there was just minimal space on the first floor, enough to elevate the house, it wouldn't be considered a story. So I don't think it's a new interpretation. Okay. So you know, definitely we want to know what's on each floor, particularly if we're going to have living space on each of the three floors. Entry, entry and storage and garage. So first, first floor there's been some resubmitted plans that you, you all have, but the lower level plan shows a garage, 16 by 22. Okay. Uh, an entry that just goes upstairs, basically looks like a f kind of an inside foyer. Okay. And then entry and storage. Okay, so the first floor is not habitable living space, correct? Uh, correct. Okay, and you're going to be uh, installing sprinkler system since you have to. Right. I think I, th I thought that was the impetus for the whole the whole yep. third story thing, but yes. Oh yeah, it's required. Okay. I'm not even sure if that submission is new, uh, Brian. I, I was just checking that. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, but other than the fact that it's being that it's required to have relief as a three-story dwelling. The, and the pyramid has changed slightly. The application is otherwise basically the same? Correct. Can you just explain why the house is being elevated, just to refresh the record? Uh, uh, to make that lower level more usable, since we're going for that third story relief anyway. No, but you were lifting the house anyway because of FEMA, flooding. Oh, oh just... correct. Well, what, uh, yeah, basically it's in a flood zone. They were knocking it down. They had to, they had to make it, uh, they had to elevate to comply with FEMA, add some freeboard. Um, we had to go through the whole rigmarole with the conservation board. We moved. We move back a little bit, but there's no further encroachment on the wetlands. Got the DEC, got the town permits. This is just the last step. Is it just complying with FEMA or is it higher than FEMA requires? It's now I'm, I'm, higher because they said it's the third floor anyway, so yeah. it sounds like I mean, our, yeah, the free board is already okay. above the FEMA requirement anyway. Okay. Okay. What's the new pyramid relief? What's the new cubic footage? The new total. We have to get you on the microphone. Yeah, no, no. Um, <laughs> Gotta get the page back. And wear glasses. The new total. The, the new total is 1621 cubic feet, 940 on the south, 535 on the north, and 146 on the east. And then, previously the north was. The north hasn't changed. The north was 535. It's, wait a second. Okay. So we're still talking about modest pyramid relief? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Still not a lot of pyramid at all. Okay. All right. 1621. Yeah. And the fact that, that, you know, the first story is not how to a living space means something to me uh, because, well, we generally, you know, have properties in the town be limited to two stories. When they're three stories, sometimes it's because of, of unique circumstances. Um, and as long as, as we're not having three stories of habitable living space, I'm, I'm okay with it. Just speaking for myself. Agreed. When it's FEMA-driven, yeah. we generally are okay with it. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Would the owners have an issue if we conditioned our, any variance granted with no habitable space on the first floor? Would you have an issue if we added a condition into any variance, if we were to grant it, that there be no habitable space allowed on the first floor? And we need to swear you in and have you go on the microphone if you'd like to speak. <laughs> I'm judging by the head nods that they're okay. The head, with that. Not, the head nods are okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Very good. Okay. Well, thank you. Um,
Okay, any other questions from members of the board or Katie? Is there anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard this evening in connection with the application of DeVito? This is a property located at 129 Shore Road in North Sea. One other thing I forgot to ask you, uh, uh, Sean, have you heard from any of the neighbors? There was some discussion between one of the neighbors to the south. It wasn't really germane to the variance, but there was a, a modification made to the, to the driveway, actually, so that the revised plan reflects that the, the parking area on the west side of the dwelling is now now doesn't pass, pass the plane of the house toward the water. Previously yeah. it did. Okay. But that was just working with the neighbors. But again, not really germane to the variance per se. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, since we don't have any comments from the public, uh, Cornelius, it is yours. Uh, move to close the public hearing, leaving open for written submissions only until October 1st with a written decision on October 21st. Second. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. DeSessa? Aye. Mr. Daly? Aye. Ms. Kern? Aye. Ms. Burgess? Aye. Mr. Tuttle? Aye. Chair Votsai? Thank, Thank you for being here. Thanks for your time. Have a good rest of your night. Likewise. Road LLC, property located Suffolk County Tax Map 900-42-3-51. Property is located at 18 Kendall's Lane, and this is held over from the May 6th, June 3rd, July 15th, August 19th. Good, Good evening. evening. You might want to tip, tip, tip the microphone or, or actually just grab it if you uh, okay. for whatever you um, want to do. I don't know if I'm coordinating <laughs> enough. Okay. Hi. Um, this is uh, Kieran Pate Murphy for the applicant. Um, the reason for the delay is I couldn't get the surveyor to go out to the site. So, so I, um, you know, I, 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 there was a lot of begging, but. I'm just making a record. I wasn't, I wasn't yeah, implying it, whatever, anything. But anyhow, I, it was no, you know, so anyhow, um, uh, Inspector uh, Riley had some additional information she wanted, um, so that's what uh, took some time. The main thing was that there wasn't anything about the uh, pyramid height and the overall height, so, and she gave very specific um, instructions about that. So um, this is uh, Squires and Holden in Southampton. It's been around, I think, for 100 years. They're very familiar with it. They did do a pyramid diagram on this and found that there is only um, 40 uh, cubic feet outside of, you know, outside of the pyramid that is required. So that was um, information that wasn't given when it was first submitted mm -hmm. because the main um, variances were about the setback along Noyak Road because this is an old... 1700 house that was added on to. So anyhow, we got that updated. So that takes care of her first issue. The second issue was um, the amount of square footage of the tennis court. Um, that was not done. And I just asked that, um, I mean, it is, there is a swimming pool there. It is going to be on the, uh, it's 110 by 55 feet that maybe you could waive that requirement because um, it's, it's in the front yard. I mean, it's going to be referenced, and this way I don't have to, you know, go back to the surveyor. Um, oh, hold on. Can you repeat that? What, what, what? I mean, they're going to have to list it as 55 she, by 110. Yeah. They didn't list the dimensions of the tennis court. Yeah. She, wanted, she wanted the, um, yeah. we have the amount of the square footage. Yeah. But we don't have how much is encroaching into the required front yard. It, oh, it just, it wasn't done. Yeah, so I, I look at it too, the, the survey doesn't show the size of the tennis court. Um, 
It is 110 by 55. I think we're going to need that noted on there. Do you want that put on? I think we have, yeah. We, we do. do. Okay. We do. Yeah. I mean, the surveyor should just be able to do that pretty easily, I would hope. Yes. Yeah. yes. He doesn't have to go out. We just need it. Yeah, no, we're just trying to. I, 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 understand. I, I, I can get that done. Okay. I, I can beg okay. and get that done. <laughs> Because it's it doesn't require any you know site visits or right. whatever. So right. anyhow, all You've right. Been there, the surveyor's been there a couple of times already. So. Yeah. So okay. So the, the board's not going to. If Marge is, is suggesting that something needs to be done, it's got to be done. The, the board's not going to waive her notes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, back in April. I can 19th. ask. Because because they're going to bounce it in the building department anyway. You okay. Know, so so I will yeah. I will get that on if okay. you will allow me to. Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe leave that, the record open for that. Yeah, that's the reason we ask. Because otherwise, you know, it, you're going to have to do it, you know, do it sooner or later. So may as well get it done now. So wh okay. whatever it is. But anyhow, I'm just I'm yep. telling you what happened, and yep. I, I just didn't want to yep. adjourn it again. I, I understand. Okay, so we're so close here. Okay, so I'll get that done. Um, the amount of square footage of the patio around the swimming pool that is encroaching in the required side yard. Um, that has been eliminated. Um, if you look um, direction-wise, the pool does not have that one section of patio, the 55-foot uh, wide and the 16-foot wide, because in R40, you need to have a 20-foot uh, 20, uh, 20 setback. The pool is exactly um, 20 feet set, setback, so, so we don't need that. that uh, um, we don't need the amount of square footage around the swimming pool that is encroaching into the required side yard because mm -hmm. it's been eliminated. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and then the last thing was the right of way, which is now Kendall's Lane. Mm -hmm. And those were the, in her comments that she submitted, that, that, that's everything, mm -hmm. except for the mistake with the tennis court, which if you allow the records to stay open, I, just for a week or so, I can get that done. Okay. So anyhow, um, that's basically, that's uh, you know, that's hopefully I answered are. all the questions. Okay. So. okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we're going to be, what we're doing is we're holding, uh, we're closing public hearings for written subs until October 1st. Okay. Um, so that would give you a couple weeks. I can to, do this. Uh, I know yeah. I can. I okay. can get this. <laughs> and if it turns out that you don't have it by then, just let Candace know and we'll, you know, okay. we'll deal with it. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Okay. So then, okay. Right, so. Yep. So if anybody's here. Um, yep. Um, any other questions from members of the board? Was there an issue about drainage for the right of um, yes. onto Kendall? But, and how has that been resolved? Okay. So I did talk to um, the town engineer because I know Mr. Clare was very interested in that. They did put drainage at the end of the, of the road there, but this is in the stormwater district, and in talking to him, everything has to be contained on site. And he said there wasn't an issue. And also, it's a New York State building code, so they have to comply. There's no, you know, requests for variances or anything. That's just, you okay. know, the neighbor being in the business of, or retired from that, but... Okay. That that that's not something, and and he was okay with that, okay with that. But I wanted for my own, you know, education, and and he said it it is okay. But you know they have to pass final inspections and get that all done, which they have to comply with state law, and they're in the stormwater area, so there's you know it's black you know it's okay. black and white, whatever. So, so the water has to retain be retained yes. on property, and yes. that's part of it. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anyone from, from the public waiting to be heard this evening in connection with the application of 1201 Noyak LLC? Uh, this is for property located at 18 Kendall's Lane in Southampton. If not, Mike, it is yours. Okay. So uh, well, it looks like we need we need some additional uh, notes on the survey, but uh, otherwise we'll leave this open for written submissions until October 1st and. Uh, there will be a decision on uh, what, what date is 21st. October, October 21st. 21st of October. Second. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Tudhill. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Chair Votsai. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you.
Item 11 is Greg and Michelle Favor, 6 Wells Lane, Hampton Bays, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-321-4-7. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm doing all right. Um, I'm, I think I previously swore you in on this one, Kevin. Yes, you have. Okay, so you're still sworn in. Okay. Um, the board had asked when the last time I was here for two additions to the survey. One was the um, front yard setback for the front porch, which is uh, exactly what we had described as 36 4. And the bigger thing was the rear yard, rear lot yard coverage with the proposed pool, which, if you can see, I think everybody should have that survey by now. Uh, came in at 19.6%, just under the 20%. Um, and I don't think we had any other issues that I'm aware of. I'm sorry, what was the rear yard coverage again? 19.6. That's rear or total? That's rear lot yard coverage. That's what the board had asked for. And I think we probably talked about it last time, but you can, can you refresh my memory on the roof um, over front entrance constructed without a building permit, how that uh, transpired? So, somewhere in the early and mid to 90s, somewhere around 93, 94, okay. um, two owners ago. Wow. And okay. unfortunately, nobody, they, these are brand new owners who right. had purchased right. it this way, okay. along with the actual back, okay. what they consider a patio now, which right. it's a little... So we have no way of knowing you know, anything about how that transpired a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions from members of the board? I, I do, because I, I don't have my application, Kevin. So what, what, is, um, what is the total lot coverage? Um, I believe 15.5%. Okay, so you don't need a variance for that. We advertise that. We right, yes, we okay. do not need a variance for that, and we do not need it for the rear lot yard either. Okay. But we do need it for the 36 floor for the front porch. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, is there anyone from the public who is waiting to be heard in connection with the application of favor? This is for property located at 8 Wells Lane in Hampton Bays. If not, Susan, it's yours. Okay, so I move that we close the public hearing and written submissions October 1st for a decision on October 21st. Second. What? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that last date. 1021. October 21st. That's, that's the decision, 1021? Okay. okay. And Mike, did you do the second? Uh, no, that was Brian. That was Brian, okay. All right. Uh, Ms. Kern? Aye. Mr. DeSessa? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Daly? Aye. Mr. Tuthill? Aye. Ms. Burgess? Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you for being here, Kevin. Have a good rest of your night. Item 12 on the agenda is Amir Rose, 872 Millstone Main Road in Bridgehampton, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-16-1-20.26. The public hearing for this application was closed on August 5, 2021, but the record was left open for written submissions by August 20, 2021. By letter dated September 15, 2021, Timothy McCauley states as the attorney for the applicant, he has no object objection to the board reopening this hearing for additional testimony. Okay, so, so as you guys remember, uh, Mr. McCauley was here, he gave testimony. Um, in reviewing the application, at least two, maybe three of the board members um, had, had suggested to me that they wanted more information. Um, I mentioned this to Mr. McCulley. He has, you know, he has no objection to us reopening it, although um, once you reopen it, he would like a little guidance. So if anybody can think of anything specific, um, just state it for the record and I can communicate it to him. Okay, well, after we do the motion to reopen, we'll do that. Okay, so so uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Okay, and we actually, uh, uh, Keith? I'll second it. Your second. Okay, uh, so Mr. <laughs> Mr. Todhill. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Da Mr. Daly. Aye. Uh, Mr. Kelly. Aye. 
Chirvatai were reopened, and so the reason that we reopened this application is because there were two different public hearings. The first public hearing was uh, by Kieran Pate Murphy, uh, and then the second public hearing was with, with Tim McCulley. And the two presentations were remarkably different from one another. And we asked Mr. McCulley at the end of the second public hearing to submit something what, you know, about uh, the changed testimony in the first presentation versus the second presentation. We didn't receive anything on that. And that's the reason, of, you know, from my perspective, that we want to get more testimonies to get an explanation as to uh, you know, what transpired there in terms of the uh, two different attorneys um, giving presentations that raised different uh, points um, on, in connection with this application. Does anyone else want anything else uh, clarified? I think we should have a timeline of what permits were actually obtained in comparison to what work was actually done because I think that was the difference between the first presentation and the second presentation. The first presentation, I was under the impression that these things were done without permits. I think Mr. McCulley's presentation indicated they were done with permits, but I haven't seen any permits or the timeline in which, which permits may, may or may not have been issued for work that was done. So between these two things, we'd be cleaning up the record quite a bit. Yes. Yep. So. Okay, then, I, then I, I would recommend you ask him to come back um, at the next meeting to give you some more information on that. I agree. Okay. Um, so um, we have room on the next meeting. We do. No, not for much, but we have room for this one. Okay. Uh, so uh, I will move uh, that we um, continue the public hearing for the application of Roe at our October seventh meeting. Second. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Chair votes aye. We'll see him on the seventh. Yep. And hopefully he'll know uh, what we're looking for. Um, Is anybody Katie? waiting on a specific decision that's here? Are you guys? Uh, are yeah, are you waiting, waiting on? For... Okay. Come on. Come on up. So you're not here for a particular application? <laughs> no, I'm. Uh, I'm not on the agenda. I'm in the. I just began the process of getting a variance. I put in my application about a month and a half ago. Okay. I expedited my building permit, uh, which I've been in the process since December 2020. And I'm doing it myself. I, I'm a contractor. I, I'm a pile driver. And, uh, I wanted to see if, since I expedited my building permit, if I can get my variance expedited so I can start construction hopefully this winter. We don't have a expedited Yeah, yeah we, don't, we don't have process. a process for expediting variances. No. No. But if it's complete, so, that would expedite it. <laughs> yeah. And, and as far as when your public hearing, you know, takes place, it's all about the, the volume that we have. So I don't know whether it's been scheduled. I don't, I don't know which application it is. I don't know whether it's going to be on the next agenda or the following agenda. But in any case, um, that's our, you know, our, our secretary, Candace Cowell, who I'm sure you've chatted with that's already, um, is, uh, you know, it, it will keep you informed as to, you know, when, when the application will be on. Okay. Yeah. And, and as, as for the speed at which it, it, it occurs, it all depends on what you're asking for and whether there is additional information. Yeah, it's an unconforming lot with yep. minimal yep. setbacks. Yep. I mean, and we'll, yeah. we'll chat that about that more when the time comes. Understood. I appreciate okay. time. I, I know it's a voluntary position. I don't mean to take up your time. I just want to see if there was something I could do. That, that's okay. All right, cool. guys. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Have a good night. I have a determination in the matter of two rows court. Southampton LLC, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-1-25.3. We'll read the relief at the end. The premises, again, is located at Two Rose Court in North Sea. It contains 54,420 square feet in the CR 200 zoning district. Benefits from a CFO from May, 17th, May 27th of 2016. Linda Riley, attorney for the applicant, appeared seeking a variance because they're converting an existing garage into habitable space to make room for an expanding family and adding a new two-car garage. Ms. Riley explained the premises is located within an old filed map and therefore benefits re from reduced setbacks pursuant to Town Code 33055B. It does meet the five-part test. There was no uh, opposition. A neighbor did appear, but it was not in opposition. Uh, type 2 pursuant to CICRA. 
Therefore, for the reasons set forth herein, this board grants relief in the following provisions of the town code. 33055B1, transfer of residential development rights procedure for a principal front yard setback of 48.7 feet, where 71.63 feet is permitted for a proposed two-story garage addition to an existing dwelling. And town code 33076D, placement of accessory buildings and structures and uses in all districts. And town code section 33083C, yards to legalize the expansion of a slate patio constructed within the total required side yard for the principal building without the benefit of a building permit on the south side of the swimming pool and the south and east sides of the hot tub. These variances are granted for structures as shown on a survey prepared by Ralph Hillel of Meets and Bounds Surveying, last revised February 10th of 2021, and the plans prepared by Michael McCrinia, RA, dated April 16, 2021. This decision is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises, including addressing the comments from the building department regarding the outdoor kitchen and over clearing prior to the issuance of a cert certificate of compliance slash occupancy for the project. Second. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Chair votes aye. Kevin, what are you here for? Do you want me to do Ooh. Postma next? Postma. Sure. Postma. Okay. Yep. Me. I have a determination in the matter of the application of Robert W. Postma and Janet Whalen. Um, uh, the subject premises is located at 141 Meacox Road, Watermill, town of Southampton. Uh, property is identified in Suffolk County tax map as 900-102-3-14.39. It's approximately 125,688 uh, square feet in an R20 uh, zoning district. Um, at the public hearing, Kevin Springer of Dynamic Legal Services appeared on behalf of the applicant, stated that a determination is sought that the proposed accessory building is subordinate or incidental to the main dwelling and its uses as the overall size of the accessory structure is 36% of the size of the existing dwelling. Owner plans to use the proposed accessory building to meet growing family needs. Property is located on 2.885 acres with dense shrubbery bordering all sides. Accessory building is located 90 feet from the front property line and 30 feet from the side property line. No objections were registered from owners of adjacent, adjacent properties. Um, so, uh, uh, let's see. Um, Zoning Board of Appeals finds that this, uh, this request meets the five-part test as set forth in town code and, and New York State law. For the reasons set forth herein, the board finds that the proposed accessory building garage with accessory apartment above is a subordinate or incidental building pursuant to town code section 330-5 definitions as the overall size of the proposed accessory building is 36% of the main dwelling and grants relief from town code 330-11.2F accessory apartment special standards for a principal front yard setback of 26.3 feet where 56 feet is required, 70% of the required 80 feet for the pro proposed accessory apartment as shown on the survey prepared by Jeffrey W. Hatterer last dated August 4th, 2021, and the plans, page A110, prepared by Jeffrey Sands, architect, dated January 7th, 2021, received by the ZBA July 14th, 2021, both incorporated herein. The uh, decision is subject to other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises, including but not limited to accessory apartment application form. Second. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Ms. Burgess. No. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Uh, Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Chair votes aye. I have a decision in mind the application of Kimberly McCree, 16 Columbia Avenue, West Hampton Beach, New York, Suffolk County Tax Map, 900-354-3-57.1. Um, Applicant requests relief from Town Code 330-11, Residential Districts Table Dimension Regulations for accessory distance from street setback, front yard, Fairview Street, 
of 33.6 feet, where 50 feet is required for a proposed 20 by 23 garage, and two 330-76D placement of accessory building structures and uses in all districts, and town code 330-83C yards to allow the proposed garage to be located within the required front yard of the principal dwelling, Fairview Street. Um, it's a very wonderful written decision. It passes the five-part test. So therefore, this board grants relief from town code 330-11 residential district stable and dimensional regulations for an accessory distance from street setback front yard Fairview Street of 33.6 feet, where 50 feet is required for a proposed 20 by 23 garage and 330-76D placement of accessory buildings, structures and uses in all districts and town code 330-83C yards to allow the proposed garage to be located within the required front yard, the principal building. Fairview Street is shown on a survey prepared by Jeffrey W. Potter of Twin Forks land surveying dated April 17, 2019, last revised July 1, 2021, and the plans prepared by Ronald C. Hanna, architect, last dated June 27, 2021. This decision is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises, including the removal of the frame shed as indicated on the aforementioned survey in compliance with the pyramid and height regulations as the plans for the proposed garage submitted did not indicate the average natural grade. Second. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Mr. DeSessa. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Chair votes aye. I have a determination in the matter of uh, Round Dune, Inc., located at 101 Dune Road in East Quag, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-385-2-14. The subject premises contains uh, 192,878 square feet, is located in the R80 zoning district and the VE18 flood zone. The premises was acquired by the applicant by deed on August 24th of 1960. Type 2 pursuant to CICRA uh, and the relevant provisions of the town code. Karen Hogue of Tui Latham um, and Aram Traconium of First Coastal Consulting appeared on behalf of the applicant stating that the premises is an Im improved oceanfront lot that was issued an emergency coastal erosion management permit December of 2019 to install stabilizing geocubes and that the applicant would like to keep the geocubes in beyond the time allowed pursuant to the permit. Mr. Traconium testified that the premises boasts four buildings that were constructed in the 60s and contain approximately 72 housing units and they're well at the time they were built well over 100 feet from the dune. <clears throat> Mr. Traconium explained that the dune is eroded, caused by factors beyond the applicant's control, and tried and tried to the uh, erection of jetties on Shinnecock Inlet in the 60s. The board is in receipt of a letter from December 16th of 2020 for the Suffolk County Planning Commission, noting that the application is a decision of local determination. I'm summarizing this. Um, the board is in, many people appeared, um, both for and against the application. Kevin McAllister of Defend H2O submitted an email in opposition to the application that the geocube should be removed as they were uh, classified as shore-breaking structures. Um, Regina Rigdon appeared, that she, could, she was the original agent. Um, there's an extensive discussion that is outlined here. Um, but skipping to the conclusion, uh, therefore, for the reasons set forth herein, this board grants relief from town code section 13820G, notification of administrator, and town code section 13820H, removal, to allow existing geocubes that were installed pursuant to an emergency coastal erosion management permit, CE, I'm sorry, ECE 19001, issued December 5th of 2019 to remain in the subject premises until the completion of the FIMP project or December 31 of 2023 
whichever is earlier, as shown on the survey prepared by John T. Metzinger, Land Surveyor of Peconic Surveying, last revised June 24th of 2020, subject to the following. One, applicant and all successors in interest and assigns agree to allow for an annual inspection of the premises by the Environmental Division in order to determine whether the geocubes have become exposed and whether there is a need to com need to complete beach and dune renourishment subject to obtaining a new CEHA permit. Two, applicant and all successors and interest in the signs agree to increase the dune height and width as well as a revegetate the dune as may be directed by the environmental division. Three, should there be erosion on the dune, the dynamic beach conditions at round dune that create significant exposure of the geocubes that cannot be remediated through the dune restoration slash renourishment. They may be ordered removed at the owner's full expense by the Coastal Erosion Hazard Administrator. The aforementioned will also be memorialized in a covenant subject to approval by the town attorney's office, which shall be filed against the premises in the office of the Suffolk County Clerk by December 16th of 2021. Further, all other conditions of emergency coastal management permit ECE19001 remain in full force and effect. Grant of the foregoing relief is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval. Second. Mr. Sessa. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Daly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. No. Mr. Tuthill. No. Chair votes aye. I have a determination on the matter of the application of Harvey Herman, this is for property located at 146 Red Creek Road in Hampton Bays, tax rent number 900-126-35. Applicant requests relief from uh, the, well, I'll, I'll let the, we'll do the relief at the end. The property is uh, in the R40 zoning district. The premises has a pre-existing CO. Um, we have comments from the building department on the application. Uh, testimony um, from the applicant and his architect, August Muff. Uh, was that they seek variances to construct an addition to the existing dwelling that will serve as an artist studio and storage and also to legalize an outdoor shower and sunroom. Mr. Herman testified that he is an artist who teaches classes at the library and shows his art locally. He explained that he and his wife have lived in the dwelling for 16 years and that as they are aging, he is 88 years old and his wife is 90 years old, they find it difficult to reach the second floor uh, to use the studio. As such, he stated that he proposes to move the studio from the second floor of the dwelling to a new space on the first floor to make it easier to access. He also testified that he is enclosed an existing deck to construct the sunroom approximately 15 years ago, not realizing that required a permit, and that the fencing and outdoor shower existed at the time that they purchased the premises. Uh, Mr. Muff testified on behalf of the applicant that this property is double the size required in this zoning district and that it is also heavily wooded, making it unlikely that the proposed addition will have any, any impact on the neighborhood. Uh, he also noted that the premises is burdened by two front yards and that the interior layout of the floor plan of the existing dwelling does not allow for the addition to be built on any of the other three sides and that the addition is close to the main entrance to the house. He explained that the owners are mobility impaired and can no longer climb stairs to get to the second floor where the studio currently is located. David Kirst of Matthews, Kirst and Cooley PLLC appeared on behalf of the neighbors, Amy Feldman, Edward and Eileen McGinty, uh, Jilla uh, Kaplan, Beverly Gross, Ola Anderson and Veronica Stolt, and Frank and Elizabeth Murata in opposition to the proposed addition, stating that it is too close to the road and his client's properties. He added that his clients all collectively owned the fee to Gathering, Rock road, Gathering Rocks Road and object only to the addition proposed so close to the road and not to the outdoor shower or sunroom. He stated that there are alternatives to the proposed location of the studio as the existing dwelling already benefits from a non-conforming setback and that constructing an addition to the dwelling presents an undue burden on front, in the front yard. He added that there are no other structures this close to Gathering Rocks Road and that the proposal is not consistent with the character of the neighborhood and that while screening always helps to some degree, the applicant could reduce the size of the addition or reconfigure the plans. And he went on a little bit further, but we'll skip that. Um, <laughs> okay, so, um, therefore, 
Actually, let me just read a little bit of, uh, well, this board does not condone construction done without the benefit of a building permit. It does find that the benefits of the application outweighs any perceived detriment to the neighborhood or the community in legalizing the outdoor shower and sunroom as well as it relates to the proposed addition. Likewise, this board finds that the granting of relief will not cause an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood nor create a detriment to nearby properties. It's, the property's premises is oversized and heavily wooded uh, and that uh, basically this application is type two, passes the, the five-part test, um, and it is not a self-created hardship. Therefore, this board grants relief from the following provisions of the town code for, the proposed, for a proposed addition, artist studio and storage to an existing dwelling, relief from town code 330.115C continuance for a principal front yard setback of 20.7 feet where 44.3 feet is existing to, to legalize a sunroom that was constructed on an existing deck without the benefit of a building permit, relief from town code 330.115C for a principal front yard setback of 42.5 feet where 44.3 feet is existing, and three, to legalize an outdoor shower that was constructed without the benefit of a building permit, relief from Town Code 33011, Residential District's Table of Dimensional Regulations, for an accessory front yard setback of 49.5 feet where 70 feet is required. These variances are granted for structures as shown in the survey prepared by Alphonse Pesci, Jr., uh, last updated May 7, 2021, and the plans prepared by August Henry Muff, last dated August 4th, 2021. Granted, this relief is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises, including one, the applicant's removal of all fencing not on the premises, and two, that any fencing remaining on the premises must be brought into compliance with the town code, both prior to the issuance of any certificates uh, for the addition, deck, or shower. Second. Mr. DeSessa? Aye. Mr. Daly? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Kern? Aye. Ms. Burgess? Aye. Mr. Tuthill? Aye. Chair votes aye. I have a decision in the matter of the application of Barbara Swislowski, 67 Groves Drive, Flanders, New York, Suffolk County Tax Map, 900-144-1-24. Applicant requests a determination as to whether or not the proposed detached garage is a subordinate or incidental building pursuant to Town Code 330-5 definitions because of its size in proportion to the main dwelling and its use. In addition, applicant requests relief from the following provisions of the Town Code for a proposed detached garage. Town Code 330-84D Pyramid Height for an encroachment in the amount of 56.7 cubic feet, and two, Town Code 330-76D, placement of accessory building structures and uses in all districts in Town Code 330-83C yards to, to allow the proposed detached garage to be located within the minimum and total side yard for the principal building. Um, this passes the five-part test. So therefore, for the reasons stated herein, this board finds the applicant's proposed attached garage is a customary accessory structure as it relates to the existing main dwelling on the subject premises. Additionally, the board grants relief for the following provisions of town code for a proposed attached garage. 330-84T, pyramid height in the amount of 56.7 cubic feet, Town Code 330-76D, placement of accessory building structures and uses in all districts, and Town Code 330-83C yards to allow the proposed detached garage to be located within the minimum and total side yard for the principal dwelling. These variances are granted for uh, structures as shown survey prepared by Jeffrey Harder last day, June 18, 2021, and the elevations prepared by Stromsky Architecture, PC, last day, September 13, 2021. This decision is subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired and may otherwise have to acquire for the final approval of the subject premises, including compliance with and addressing the building department's comments prior to the issuance of a certificate of compliance uh, slash occupancy for the proposed garage. Second. Mr. Tidehill. 
Aye. Mr. DeSessa? Aye. Ms. Burgess? Aye. Ms. Kern? Aye. Mr. Daly? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Trevor Tsai? Aye. Uh, therefore, in the uh, matter of uh, Patrick DePiro and Kristen Berry, uh, subject premises at 42 Tarpon Road, East Quag, Town of Southampton, County of Suffolk. Uh, on the, identify the Summit, Suffolk County tax map 900 362 approximately 11,550 square feet in an R10 zoning district and AE9 flood zone. Uh, benefits from a pre-existing certificate of occupancy, 1973, uh, certificate of compliance, uh, 2013, for a hot tub with barrier on a grade deck. And um, a building department comments note that the premises is not considered a waterfront property. Uh, applicants took title uh, March 13th, 2020. And this board finds this a type two action under SECRA. Uh, the public hearing in this matter, Daphne Dawn, Bond of Surfside Environmental Planning appeared stating the applicants seek variances to construct an in-ground swimming pool and patio on the premises. Ms. Vaughn testified that the premises is located in the Shinnecock Shores development in, uh, is an improved conforming lot that fronts on a dug canal and contains a functional pre-1977 steel bulkhead which acts as the wetlands boundary. She explained that the pool and patio comply with town code setbacks but are placed within the required side yard of the principal building. Uh, Ms. Vaughn also testified that the building department noted that the existing 96 foot square foot 96 square foot shed is located within the requiring, required side yard. Ms. Vaughn testified the project also maximized the setbacks from the wetlands and is consistent with the character of the neighborhood. Uh, we're in receipt uh, of a letter uh, dated August 25th, 2021 from the chairman of the conservation board stating that the shed and pool are in fact consistent. Um, we find that it does pass the five part test. Therefore, the board grants relief from the following provisions of the town code number one for the proposed swimming pool, town code 33076D, uh, and town code 33083C uh, to allow the proposed swimming pool to be located within the required total side yard for the building, for the principal building. Number two, to legalize the slate patio constructed on the north side of the dwelling without benefit of a building permit uh, for an accessory side yard setback of point zero of zero point nine foot where eight feet is required and uh, 33076 D and 33083 C to allow the slate patio to remain within the minimum and total yard total side yard for the principal building and number three to legalize the 12.2 by 7.9 foot shed constructed on the north side of the dwelling without the benefit of a building permit. Town code 330-11 for an accessory side yard setback of 5.2 feet where eight feet is required. Town code 330-76D um, to allow the shed to remain within the minimum and total side yard for the principal building. Town code 330-76A to allow the shed to remain 3.7 feet from the main dwelling where a minimum of five feet is required on the condition that the exterior walls of the shed and the dwelling have fire protection and compliance with the New York State Code. Uh, number four, town code 330-84D, pyramid height for an encroachment in the amount of 69.5 cubic feet. These variances are granted for structures as shown on the survey and pyramid sketch by Pat T. Sarafico, Sarafico Land Surveying, last revised August 23rd, 2021. The grant of this relief is also subject to such other conditions and permits as applicant has already acquired or may otherwise have to acquire for final approval of the subject premises. Hold, hold on one second, Mike. I didn't read the last line.
Applicant is advised to keep all structures on their property as noted by the Conservation Board. Second. Mr. Daly. Aye. Mrs. Sessa. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Kern. Aye. Ms. Burgess. Aye. Mr. Tuthill. Aye. Chair Lutz, aye. Well, I think we're done. And it looks like we're going back to Zoom. Nice seeing you all in person. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> do we have a motion to close? So moved. So moved. Do, we have, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. We are closed.